So you've probably seen everybody talking about Bitcoin, me included. If you have it, you're probably posting about it. If you don't have it, you're probably wondering about it. And given I have posted about it, I am getting all kinds of questions. How do you buy it? What is Bitcoin? What percentage of my portfolio should I allocate to crypto? When should I sell it? In this video, I'm gonna share my thoughts on whether or not Bitcoin is indeed a good investment, or if, as Bill Gates says, it's an innovation the world would be better without. Now, remember, I used to be licensed to provide financial advice when I did run a trading education business, but bear in mind, given that I no longer do that, I'm also no longer licensed and do not hold that license, and anything you hear on this channel is purely my personal opinion. Also, please be aware that in the comments section of these videos, it gets a little bit sketchy, and anyone asking for your WhatsApp number and to send a bunch of cash is not me. All right, so I think the most common question I'm asked is, do you still trade? And the answer is, Kinda. I don't actively day trade like I used to, but I do invest. And while I did stay away, unfortunately, from crypto for a long time because it was so volatile and was a speculation, I have changed my tune on it, given the factors that I'm gonna explain to you in this video. Also, if you follow me on Instagram, you'll probably already have guessed that I am pro Bitcoin, but it doesn't necessarily mean that you should go buy a bunch of Bitcoin right now, and I'm gonna explain why in a minute. First, let's take a look at some of the factors that Bitcoin has going for it and why people are now flocking to it like crazy. One of the things that made Bitcoin so risky was that it really only becomes valuable with mass adoption. What does that mean? It means that we have the power, kind of. Let's go backwards a little. Bitcoin really serves two purposes. First, as a store of wealth. So like gold, people invest in Bitcoin under the assumption that it will rise in value and grow their wealth and save them from losing money due to having the bulk of their money in a savings account getting eaten away by inflation. We're seeing that like crazy at the moment with Bitcoin hitting new highs this week and also some lows, which we can pretty much thank Elon Musk in large part for. After announcing that he invested 1.5 billion in Bitcoin, price spiked above 50,000, A, because it delivered massive social proof. If the smartest dude in the world is buying Bitcoin, maybe we all should. And B, because he also announced that Tesla plans to accept Bitcoin as a form of payment. This is important because it means that Bitcoin is moving closer to serving the second purpose, to become a widely accepted medium of exchange like US dollars. So we've checked off one box. Yes, people and smart people are investing in Bitcoin as a store of wealth, but if and when will it become widely accepted as a form of cash, essentially? When can I go to Starbucks, or actually not Starbucks, because Starbucks is shit. When can I go to Blue Bottle and buy my overpriced Californian organic oat milk latte with Bitcoin on Apple Pay? Actually, as of February 12th, 2021, we can pretty much all do that. And while I certainly wouldn't say that Bitcoin is widely accepted just yet, every day more and more merchants are announcing that they accept Bitcoin, like PayPal, Overstock, and even the city of Miami just recently announced that they are accepting Bitcoin, meaning that we are all moving closer and closer to it becoming a widely accepted medium of exchange and as a store of wealth. But what about the negatives? Because Bitcoin, although I do see it overcoming this challenge over time, it's still incredibly volatile. And while this does really affect people who ultimately invest in Bitcoin as a store of wealth, it's a bigger challenge when you consider Bitcoin as a form of payment. What does that mean? Well, right now, if I go to the store to buy my overpriced latte in US dollars, I'm pretty confident of the purchasing power I have because the US dollar is so stable. Bitcoin, however, fluctuates, as we've seen this week, 10% up or down any given day. Meaning if I'm on a budget, some days I'm gonna be able to afford my latte and some days I won't. Businesses like my local coffee shop are also far less likely to accept payment in Bitcoin given that when rent comes due each month, they can't rely on the purchasing power of their profits. So this is a massive factor standing in the way right now of Bitcoin becoming massive come. <laughs> Bitcoin becoming mass adopted as a medium of exchange. Given how convenient it is to transact in Bitcoin, however, I do think that we're gonna overcome this, especially when you take into consideration the next critical factor that I'm gonna talk about. Money is losing value. Fiat money, meaning money that the government controls, is continually increasing in supply. Central banks are printing money like crazy, and if you consider the very basic concept of supply and demand, a limited supply of something is what makes it valuable. So with fiat money, we basically have no cap, but Bitcoin is finite. There are 20 million total Bitcoins. Once all of them are mined, it's pretty much it. But wait, mined? What the fuck does that mean, Amy? Yeah, mined. Just like we'd mined for gold, we also mined for Bitcoin, just digitally. Bitcoins are stored on the blockchain, which is a type of distributed ledger where data is bundled into blocks and each new block of data is chained to all the previous blocks, hence the name blockchain. 
So blockchain is really just the technology underpinning Bitcoin and many other cryptocurrencies. And if you're a Bitcoin miner, essentially what you're doing is solving algorithms using computers to unlock blocks from the blockchain, which in turn mean that there's more Bitcoin in circulation. So there are currently 144 blocks per day being mined on average, and there are 6.25 Bitcoins per block. So 144 times 6.25 is 900. So that's the average amount of new Bitcoins being mined per day. So out of the 21 million total Bitcoins available, currently about 18.5 million have already been mined. This leaves less than 3 million that have yet to be introduced into circulation. So long story short, in theory, while fiat money continues to decrease in value because of its growing supply, Bitcoin should increase in value given its limited supply and growing demand. It's also decentralized, meaning that it doesn't have a central bank or a single administrator and that it can be sent from user to user on the peer-to-peer -peer Bitcoin network without the need for intermediaries. Once again, unlike the dollar where the government controls it and intermediaries get involved in transaction processing time, bank fees, all that kind of stuff. Now, given freedom is my highest value and I am not a massive fan of the current economic system that's rigged to keep us trapped, it's not just the practical element of Bitcoin that is appealing to me, but the whole idea that it gives power back to the people, and I know I'm not alone in feeling this. Bitcoin is very much becoming a movement of sorts because people believe in it so strongly and the ideology behind it. So by now, it's pretty Pretty clear that I like Bitcoin. I own Bitcoin, I advocate in buying Bitcoin. But how much? What percentage of your portfolio should you allocate to Bitcoin? And that really depends on your risk tolerance. I had one financial advisor recently telling his clients that it's far too speculative and to never exceed more than 1% of your portfolio. And I also know people who are all in on Bitcoin. And I mean all in with Bitcoin. And while I do think that it's becoming less speculative and more viable as a long-term investment, it is still volatile. So know that before you touch it. Only invest money that you can afford to lose like with anything. Don't invest thinking that you're gonna get rich quick. And remember to balance your portfolio with investments in other asset classes. I personally adhere to an all-weather type portfolio, which over the long term, over the last 19 years actually, has produced annualized about 7.96% in return. But I've tweaked this to allow for 20% cryptocurrencies given all of the above factors that I just talked about and I'm in the position where my income isn't capped and I'm confident that I can always produce more. So if something were to happen, even to 20% of my portfolio, I'm not too worried. Let me know below if you want more details about what investments I have and how to set up an all-weather portfolio for yourself and I can make that in the coming weeks. Also, if you're ready to buy some Bitcoin, sign up to Gemini using the link in the description and we'll both get credited free Bitcoin once you deposit $100 or more. This doesn't cost you anything extra, so again, like always, just sharing these links so that we both win. But please, only invest wisely and only invest money that you're willing to lose. If this was helpful, I would absolutely love it if you could like and subscribe as it really supports my channel and encourages me to make more videos like this for you guys. In the meantime, have an amazing week and I will see you soon.